but I have never. <laughs> so I came home this evening and it was lashing rain. So I pinned a few words to mark Pat's lintly rain. Well, I couldn't pass a great chance like this. So these are my thoughts as I reminisce. Now I get the chance pass to upstage. And let me clarify, we're not the same age. <laughs> Take a good look at Pat and you will agree that he looks a good few years older than me. <laughs> but I first met Pat at secondary school and like all the big lads, I thought he was cool. Even back then he was top of the class and amongst all his peers, none could surpass. Then after college, the great UCG, he graduated with a first class degree. The next time I saw him, I thought he looked weird. He had a long head of hair and a massive black beard. Mm. <laughs> but that was more than 37 years ago. Pat had come back to work in my grown. That was the start of a glorious career. But of things less well known, now I will veer. Well, I'm sure it's off now, isn't it? With Westport Pat played rugby football. It suited a man both strong and tall. But his true love was for the green and the red, and he dreams of all Ireland when he goes to bed. <laughs> he likes to go golfing with his golfing squad to show off the skills that he learned from Todd. But now that he has time, and this is me guessing, he'll be back with Todd for many a lesson. But then a few years ago, Pat got a pain, which he put down to simply a strain. But up in Galway, he really was rocked, and they told him his arteries were severely blocked. Though he was weak, he still used his brains, and on his bedside, he passed over the reins. <laughs> He picked up the phone and made a call. You must lead the plant, he then said to Paul. <laughs> Pat had six months in which to recoup. He took stock of himself a time to recoup. There in Carahalli, in the care of his wife, he thought of the people dear in his life. He then put pen to paper and he began to write of his family background and we then got an insight. He told stories of making of times long ago and the love of his mum in a book, Mary Jo. Then a few years ago, Pat bought a big boat. And out in Clue Bay, he set her afloat, but he hadn't seen what lay ahead and the boat now rests inside a boat shed. Because <laughs> Allergan had problems and to Westport they called. They looked to a man who was clever but bald. <laughs> Clover Ops were indebted that he did agree and he became a senior VP. Yesterday in the canteen it was so nice to see the whole plant acknowledge a great employee when Swanton and Paul spoke in rich praise of how Pat steered Allegan through many a phase. And a book by Amelia of memories past, those 37 years had gone by so fast. Paul Kelly O'Neilly gave him a gift on behalf of the people who worked on each shift. Then up stood a man of widespread renown, GAA's top man, the great Chris McGowan. <laughs> and the whole place erupted simply because we honoured Pat with a standing applause. So here tonight, for me it's a treat to see this great crowd in the Ashley Suite. With Duffy's providing the music to dance, so get out on the floor when you get a chance. Now marks the time for Pat to retire. What he has achieved, we really admire. My wish for him far exceeds wealth. It's a long life, contentment, and good health. But I know that Pat is not one for a fuss. Despite all his fame, He's like any of us. From the lab to VP, he's raised through the ranks. So tonight, to Pat, we simply say thanks.